It's time to tackle the next item on your programming to-do list. Read the value of the slider after the user presses the hit me button. But before you do that, I want to tell you about a very important data type you'll use in your Android apps, strings. To create a string in Kotlin, you simply surround some text with double quotes. And behind the scenes, strings are just a sequence of characters. You can imagine them as a bunch of characters hanging on a piece of string, like you see here. Strings in Kotlin have a cool feature called string templates, also known as string interpolation in other programming languages. That's just a fancy way of saying that you can put placeholder values inside your strings, and these placeholder values will be replaced dynamically with code when the app runs. Imagine you'd like to insert a dynamic value into a string at runtime. For example, maybe you want to say hello, then the name of the user of the app. To accomplish this, you simply put a dollar sign in front of the variable inside the string. In this example, if the name is set to Joe, at runtime, the string will become hello Joe. Or you can use an expression. You just wrap the expression inside curly braces and put a dollar sign in front of the curly brace. The expression is then evaluated at runtime and returns the string. Before we display the value of the sig in the dialog, we need to first get the selected value. Let's do that now. For this, you set up a listener that monitors when the thumb in the sigma has been moved. But before you do that, you need to make a correction. In the last episode, I passed in the string for the hit me button as a dialogues button text, instead of the one we created for it. I've corrected that now and you can go ahead and correct yours if you made the same mistake. Now, back to the code. To set up a listener for the sigma, you need to create a variable that will hold the selected value of the sigma. Add it in the main activity class like so. Next, let's set up the sigma's change listener. Enter the following code below the hit me buttons listener. This is the structure of the sigma change listener. Android Studio complains because the argument implements something called an interface. Yeah, on sigma change listener is the interface. For now, you can think of an interface like a contract. The contract requires that we implement certain methods. This object must agree to the terms of the contract. Hover over the object. It tells us that we need to implement members. Click on that item. And this opens up a dialog box. You can see that this interface or simply contract expects us to implement three methods. Go ahead and hold down the shift key and select them all. Then click the OK button. This adds the three methods you selected. These methods have been overridden from the interface that declared them. So this is the object version of these methods. And you can see the override keyword in the method declaration. I'll go ahead and clean up the generated code and give the parameters more descriptive names. And by the way, the word parameter is used when declaring a method, while argument is used when you pass the expected value when calling the method. Not to worry, all the stems would make more sense as you progress in the learning path. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that now. The method we are interested in is the onProgressChange method. This method is triggered when the progress of the sigma is changed, for instance, when the thumb is moved. In here, you have access to the sigma, the progress, and the from user boolean. A boolean data type is used to store a value that can either be true or false. So, from user will return true if the progress change was initiated by the user, for example, when the user slides the thumb. If it was changed programmatically, then it would return false. To set the slider value to the updated progress value, enter the following code inside the onProgressChange method. This sets the slider value variable to the current progress point. Next, 
you're going to use this value inside the dialog message of the show result method. First, copy the dialog message variable. Then convert the current dialog message code into a comment by clicking on that line, then you press command and forward slash. You can see that double forward slashes are added to that line and it turns gray. Comments are useful in programming. They can be used to describe some code you write or they can be used to temporarily exclude code that you could add back later. The Kotlin environment will skip those comments when the file is being executed. Using comments is better than deleting the code and trying to remember it when you need it again. Go ahead and paste the code you copied below the comment and update it to the following. This is an example of Kotlin's string template feature we talked about earlier. This expression will be evaluated to a string where the number will be inserted at that point in the string. Run your app to see the updates. Nice. The dialog displays the SIGBAR's selected value. This is cool, but we need to use the concept of interpolation in the strings.xml file. Go open up the string.xml file. Then update the result dialog message string to the following. The format that you see here is the placeholder for the number that will be inserted into the string. 1 signifies the position of the item. So if you have another item at some other point in the string, then it will be denoted with the number 2. The letter D after the dollar sign signifies the type of value passed. D simply means the placeholder would accept the whole number just like an integer. As a side note, strings are denoted with the letter S. And if you notice, we added the backslash before the single quote. This is done to let the XML processor correctly interpret the single quote, as it is a special character. Head back to the main activity class. Then comment the display message variable line. And uncomment the previous display message variable declaration. After that, go ahead and pass in slider value as the second argument of the guest string method, like so. Run your app once again. And you have the slider value correctly displayed using the placeholder from the strings.xml file. 